The UK, um, the UK adopted herd immunity to begin with. It went against everything that everyone else was doing in the EU. In fact, it went against medical advice. And although they were told millions will die, Malaysia is the safest country in the world and I think to be honest you just got to look at how it dealt with coronavirus to see that um, at one point Malaysia was one of the worst affected Southeast Asian countries in fact it was the worst hit Malaysia had a big spike of infections through a religious event um, and it wasn't a huge amount in comparison to what the EU have been having but actually what Malaysia did is they preempted it all and they struck early and stopped religious gatherings. They then put the country into lockdown and that lockdown was enforced by the police and they enforced rules by fining people that were going out in the streets under the MCO. Um, they put a ban on outdoor activities, um, including exercise, so people weren't allowed out. If anyone was caught out jogging, um, they would either be fined or be sent home. Um, and generally the public adhered to all these rules the key thing Malaysia did to begin with is they closed the borders they stopped foreigners entering they stopped interstate travel to stop infections traveling across the country um, and they put restrictions on transport such as one meter between each person one person per grab only the head of the house was allowed out to get food um, shops were closed and in fact what they did is they left grocery shops open and pharmacies open only for essential items and only one person was allowed out at a time so that meant that there was a real real low number of people out on the streets at any time people weren't allowed to do exercise so there was none of that um, and this lockdown wasn't just two weeks three weeks this was a three month lockdown with a number of different phases, basically heightening restrictions when conditions got worse and reducing restrictions when things got better. And now they are reporting nearly single figures. And the beauty about what Malaysia have done is they have been reporting each day the number of figures. They've also been implementing at all malls they had hand sanitizer. they took your name and your details, they took your passport down, they took your phone number down, so in case there was any outbreaks, they would contact you. In some places, they put enhanced security down to lock down where there had been cases. They were cordoning it off and ensure that that area didn't leave their area. In fact, you know, they had gone from the highest and worst hit down to nearly single figures. So it's become one of the most successful countries. In fact, it's had one of the highest recovery rates in, in Asia, or oh, in the world even, um, from COVID-19. Got to look at the UK to, to, to see that and where we're from, you know, from Italy and from the UK. I mean, the UK, um, the UK adopted herd immunity to begin with. It went against everything that everyone else was doing in the EU. In fact, it went against medical advice. And although they were told millions will die, they thought this herd immunity would work. But in fact, after a few weeks and the infections became out of control and the NHS, their hospital system started to get overloaded, they tried to change up the plan and go with the lockdown system. But of course, the lockdown system was, you know, a little too late and already the infections were spiraling out of control. Um, and then in this lockdown, the lockdown wasn't enforced like it was in Asia or in Malaysia for that, for that reason. They had a partial lockdown in the sense where you were allowed to go outside and exercise. You know, suddenly the UK became a country where everyone was going outside and exercising. Like it was a trend on social media. Like we saw tons of people we knew, you know, going out for runs and you were like, you don't even exercise. You know, it was, it was crazy. It wasn't just them. It was the whole of the UK doing it. And you know, you can't blame them being locked up like that. I understand. But of course the police didn't have, you know, the respect needed and they weren't dishing out, you know, fines or arrests, um, you know, enough.
to warrant people staying at home. So people were breaking the rules and not sticking by it. And the UK didn't really understand how serious it was. And now the UK has got the highest death rate in Europe. And it is now 250,000 or reached 250,000 active cases. I mean, that's a quarter of a million. And now what the UK is trying to do is reduce the lockdown and by reducing the lockdown they're trying to save the economy but of course you've got 250,000 cases active you know and the NHS you know is in a bad way trying to deal with all these cases you know and you've just got to compare the numbers to what Malaysia has done to realize that the UK hasn't implemented the system like they have um, and you know it all came too late and the situation in the UK is really bad I mean you know it's, it's quite a similar situation, or it was quite a similar situation with Italy. Yeah, Italy, Italy is quite different actually, I say, but mostly because Italy was the first country in Europe where coronavirus spread so quickly. Mm, so that's true. Italy didn't really have advice from many other countries in Europe for Italy. The, the food lockdown in Italy didn't start till, until around mid March, which is quite a lot if you consider the first case it appeared around the uh, end of January, 1st of February. So it was about around six weeks that Italy was under some kind of uh, partial lockdown that only took place uh, in uh, the northern part of Italy. But it wasn't even that strict in the sense that people were at last some point were allowed to travel. And people actually travel across Italy, and that's for like <laughs> trying to like reach their families and um, you know good holidays. They, they, they spread it even more. Yeah, then. That, that's what actually contrib contributed to spreading in Italy I believe all these people moving because they started panicking and uh, and that's how the situation actually worsened in Italy and only then they decided to do this full lockdown but yeah similar to the UK even then the lockdown was not as respected as here for sure like people were advised not to people were not allowed to actually um, leave their homes and all that technically but some people obviously didn't really observe these rules, so they did still leave the house and, you know, they they did not, a lot of people, a lot of people did like meet in groups, everything that should have not been done was not taken as seriously as here, for sure, because we've seen it here and I have family at home, we, we know people, we know what's happened in Italy, I was closely following the situation and I can tell here the situation is way different. We wish that you know the UK and Italy had adopted a similar stance to Malaysia, and you know preempted um, coronavirus in that sense, and actually enforced the lockdowns earlier, but also better. Uh, yeah, I, think, I think it was all a case of like too little, too late in Europe. Yeah. In literally every country, everything came too late. So, so these European nations like the UK and Italy, by trying to save their economy, you know, by making the restrictions, you know, less tight and less restrictive, you know, they actually made things worse. And now we're in a lot of a worse position than a country like Malaysia is. Yeah, and there's just a lot of uncertainty on when this is all going to end, because you really can see the light like, at the end of the tunnel yeah. anywhere in Europe, to be honest. Italy is getting better, but still the restrictions are being lifted and I, I don't want to say anything because I hope it's not going to happen, but I'm worried the curve might go up again because this is possible because it's a bit, it's a bit premature what, what is happening. You know, both those countries being our home countries, it's, it's quite difficult for us to watch, you know, yeah. and see that unfold. But, you know, but at the same time, be blessed and feel lucky that we're in a country like Malaysia where things have been handled so well. So yeah, I mean, what I want to end on is, Malaysia, can we borrow your health minister <laughs> and take some advice from your government because they have done an absolutely amazing job. Uh, we, need, we need the attitude of your people as well to help our countries. Because <laughs> I'll tell you what, you know, we are really struggled with it. but. Also, finally, we just wanted to say, you know, that's why we think Malaysia is the safest country in the world at the moment.